when Puja Swamiji says, when you talk to God, it's prayer. When God speaks to you, it's meditation. So you, you smile for the Buddha, it's prayer. He smiles back at you, that's meditation, that's grace. And that's what always happens. Anyway, and that's why, why we know that grace, grace is there for all. It's not, I smile at the Buddha and sometimes he smiles back. Or I smile at the Buddha and if he's in a good mood, then he smiles back. Or I smile at the Buddha and if I remember to brush my hair, then he smiles back. But I smile and he smiles back. And that that smile is the best gift. And that's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful teaching that that, that is the gift. You know, so frequently we, we go to God, we embark on a spiritual path, a spiritual practice to get something out of it especially these days with so much of the, the New Age community talking about, you know, the gains you get from meditation. So if you become a good meditator, you will be able to become like a magnet for money. You'll become like a magnet for success. You'll become like a magnet for, you know, all of the name and the fame and the glory and whatever you want. And it makes us forget that that's actually not what prayer was intended for. It's not, that's not the end goal of our spiritual pa practice or our spiritual path. That yes, yes, we get what we want. Yes, we become like a magnet for good things, absolutely. But it's only the, the, the new age and slightly, slightly shallow vision that makes us think that good things and rewards and all that we want are money or that all that we want is material success or that all that we want is to, you know, become the highest person in the company or to get name and fame. Yeah, when we pray, it connects us to grace. When we pray, it connects us to all of the goodness. We smile at the Buddha. The Buddha smiles back. And in that smile, all of that, all of that comes. But when all of that comes, money, that level of success, that name, that fame, these are, these are not things that we even desire anymore, the, the sheer longing for that shows us that we haven't yet experienced the smile of the Buddha. Because when we have, as your song says, that becomes the best gift. It's not, it's not like, you know, mom is smiling, therefore maybe I'll get an ice cream after dinner. Or mom is smiling, therefore maybe she'll have, let me have an extra cookie. You know, that, that smile, sometimes when we see it on the face of a parent, a teacher, an employer, we think, oh, good, they're happy with me. Therefore, maybe I will get something. Boss is smiling, maybe I'll get a raise. Teacher smiling, maybe we'll get, you know, extra free time, or maybe, maybe that's because I got a good grade on my test. But when the Buddha smiles, that smile is the gift. We're never thinking, oh, oh, God is smiling at me. Great. Maybe I'm gonna, you know, make a lot of money this year. That smile of God is the gift. 
And in that gift, nothing else matters. That is, that is all of what we're longing for. There's a, a wonderful story of a that actually Puja Swamiji told me when I had been here. It's probably the first teaching story he told me. I had been here, God, I don't know, maybe a few weeks, maybe a couple months, but right in the very, very, very beginning. And the story goes that there was a king who was a very, very powerful king. And the king went off to do what kings in those days did, which was to, to capture more land. You know, the kings would go off for months or years on end to the neighboring lands to expand their kingdom, to try to, you know, capture neighboring lands. And this king had many, many wives back home. And after he had been out in the neighboring lands for a long time, he was just about to leave to go back to his kingdom. And so he sent messages back to his queens asking them, what should I bring back for you? What would you like? Because, you know, they'd come back and they'd bring back silks or gems or, you know, all sorts of things from, from foreign lands. And the king got all of these lists back from his wives. Bring me this, bring me that, bring me these fabrics, bring me these gems, bring me this food, bring me whatever queens at that time longed for from foreign lands. And one queen, one queen sends back a piece of paper that just has number one written on it. And the king, like many kings in these, these stories, was a good man, but, but simple intellectually. He was not very, very deep. And so he gets this note with number one, and he says to his advisor, minister, he says, she's not very smart. He says, I always knew she was not, you know, very, very smart. Number one. What, is, what does one mean? I asked, I asked for a list of things. What does one mean? But his advisor was very wise. And the advisor says, no. That number one means you are my number one. And what this queen is saying is you are number one. She doesn't want all of those other things. There's no list from this queen. Just you. Oh, the king said, you know, naturally he was, he was very touched and pleased. And so he sent all of, his, all of his other soldiers and his people to all of his other queens with their carriages and boxes full of, you know, silks and other, other fabrics or gems and whatever. And he personally went to this one queen. And as Puja Swamiji told me the story, he said, you know, and of course, naturally, wherever the king goes, everything goes with him. I mean, yeah, a few boxes may go here, a few carriages may go there, but wherever the king goes, obviously, all of the soldiers, all of his people, all of the goods, everything goes with the king. Nobody's going to say to the king, oh, yeah, okay, no problem, you go there, we'll be waiting for you back at the palace. Obviously, wherever the king is, king ki piche 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 sab kuchate. Everything is there with the king. And so when, when what we want is only God, which of course is what the, the moral, the teaching, the metaphor of the story is, when what we want is only God, when what we long for is only God, naturally with God's presence, everything else comes, like the king. When in that smile is everything, then yeah, everything is there. We lose when we think that somehow through my prayer or through my meditation or through my spiritual practice, I'm going to get this or get that or get this. Yeah, sometimes we get it. Mantras are very powerful. Siddhis come. This, you know, the path is powerful. But in getting those things, we've made ourselves like the queens who wanted just fabrics and gems. 
instead of the actual presence of the king. So yeah, they get their fabrics, they get their gems, they get their silks, but they're left without, without the presence. And in that presence is where the real magic happens. So I usually don't begin satsang with a lecture. It's usually just questions, but I was so so touched by your song that it it inspired inspired so much thank you